Howdy chaps and welcome back to another fantastic episode and I'm not entirely sure what this episode is going to be probably just a bit of a look around at the workshop and have a look at this Landau that's lovely and clean and has, and has come back from sandblasting um, it's come back looking spiffy been very happy with it, might have a closer look at this XC coupe I'll show you what I've been doing on this XB coupe and you know just some of the things that are going on in the shop I think might be a bad thing. Um, we'll just look at a few things and a bit, just a bit of a workshop walk around and um, a bit of lay of the land because um, as I said in my last video I might be hitting the point where I've got quite a bit of work on and I'm the thought pattern has been brewing in my noggin that I may actually have to employ somebody to come work with me here um, but we haven't quite worked out the logistics of that yet but I have a horrible suspicion that may actually need to happen just by the insane workload because um, I regularly regularly get um, questions and messages of people um, asking um, if it's if I'm available to work on their car and as much as I'd love to say yes to everybody uh, I do have to be mildly realistic on the fact that there's quite a lot of work here already and I am unfortunately turning people away at the moment just saying probably going to be waiting 12 to 18 months before there's a, an available spot in the shop unless I get to the point where I need to actually hire somebody and then we can start actually working on two cars at a time rather than just me working on one car but I'm very particular about um, it could be just me being super paranoid and that, but I'm very particular about the work that someone is going to do for me because I may be that kind of person where I'll probably check on their work before I, I go, yes, that's good. I know that sounds really um, particular, but uh, I like to think that I have a good standard of work and I'd like if I get someone down the track, they would also need to have the mindset of you need to treat every car like it's yours every person needs to have their car done to a standard that you would be happy with so you almost have to step out of your mindset and look at your own work and critique it as if it wasn't your work because um, that's what I used to say to apprentices when they'd go what do you think of this and I'd say all right come here tell me what you think of that pretend it's not yours and um, look at it objectively and tell me what you think's wrong with it and that would trigger them to think oh maybe that's what I could have done better you know so I'm I always critique my own work and I never think it's good enough <laughs> um, I definitely know it's not rubbish but I always try to strive for better um, but that's just me being a bit crazy so whoever I'd hire would probably have to know that I'm going to study their work thoroughly and if they do something that's a better idea I'll be all over that like a fat kid in a cupcake <laughs> um, but yeah I just thought this might be a good one we can have a look at this Landau and I have been studying the pair of them like the two coupes going what did Ford change between the XC and the XB body shells because they did change quite a bit I've actually noticed um, so yeah, we'll just have a bit of a look around and um, on the weekend I will do a video on um, working the little dent puller side hammer thing because I know there's one chap who's very much keen to know how that works and it's surprisingly simple. And also watching Peter Anderson's video, I'm going to need to get my finger out and get his guards done because his car is nearly finished. So I mean they're not actually miles off being done but you know, just go like, Hoo! So let's have a look, eh? Alrighty, chick children. I was going to say kids, but you're all grown adults now. <laughs> right, now this is the Landau. It is back and it is naked. Well, it's technically not. Um, it's actually now in Epitech, which is a really, really good epoxy primer. The reason that it's very very good to put down an epoxy primer is these primers are non-porous they do not absorb moisture which is why they're a particularly good 
uh, base to put down first. That's why a lot of people do them and they tend to actually do their bodywork over the top of this stuff. That way moisture can't creep down to the steel. I personally have seen cars left out in the weather in this stuff and they will last an insanely large amount of time before any surface rust gets to them. Because obviously, you know, the sun will break down the stuff eventually and nothing lasts forever. But it's amazing how much dirt, sand, grit falls out after a good blasting. So uh, we have revealed some interesting stuff that's been done to this car. But it is, I mean, I would have loved this car to have been on a rotisserie, but it will go on one in a short little while because I want all these cars on rotisseries because it makes life super easy. Um, so when we do the repairs, we'll have it on one. So we've recovered. The engine bay is all looking good. Uh, there is some stuff going on in the firewall there and there, but not too bad. I don't know why this section was cut off and only tacked back on, but that'll be, you know, I'll have to fix that. But most of the engine bay is not too bad. Um, one thing I was noticing between the two of them, because this is a proper XC coupe, this is not the later ones because for st this is getting into how much I follow the details because uh, I'm crazy just by looking at that bracket on the shock tower you know that's the early XC's on the later ones when they did the update the washer bottle moved from there to over there so that bracket is deleted on the later ones uh, sad life and for those wondering this is what a factory sump guard looks like they're incredibly rare and they're incredibly strong so this car for some reason has one fitted but as I was staring at this car I was looking at the firewall because you know effectively this car is an XB realistically because you know it's a late one because it's got the extra braces in my brother's Lando which is now the blue one his isn't actually an XA judging by the era so his car doesn't have those braces but this car is effectively an XB um, so if you look at the firewall right there there's a rib going up with a line going across that's there and on this one being XC it's completely smooth and if you watched Peter Anderson's video where he had to repair his firewall I think he actually had to cut a section out of a XB to put in his XC and the reason it's flat on this is because that's where the carbon canister lives it has to be flat against the firewall um, also notice that this particular skirt here is a different one to that on I'm going to call this car an XB, so on the XBs, that engine base skirt is different. The firewall lip here is flat, and these don't tend to rust as badly as the early ones like this. So these all, they all lift up, and that's flat. So that's XC. Also, they changed the plenum chamber design on XCs too. The tops are smooth, they don't tend to rust as badly. I mean aside from some interesting work going on this is sort of what it looks like it has a lip that comes up this goes across and on this one it's cut short and the plenum chamber vents down in there which on the early ones are a weird sort of round shape on the XC's they're actually square um, you know all kinds of little odds and ends that they change between them so it's you know fairly easy to pick them And of course, for those wondering, on the factory V8 cars, the radiator support front panel has an extra brace in it. But I did know on the late XC bodies, on all of them, all XC sedans, everything later on in the tail end of production, a lot of them had, and I'm talking about the very last of them, all had V8 rad supports because I had a factory six cylinder car, Povo Pack Falcon 500, and it had a V8 rad support on it from new and these actually as far as I'm aware are the same guard brackets as XB's but on XC's they're welded to the rad support rather than on XB's where they're removable um, you know a few differences I don't know how interesting this video is going to be but yeah they've changed a lot this will be some fun stuff to try and figure out what's going on in there I need to discuss with the customer what to do about this because it's it's a hard one because I'm like do I rip it all out and do it all again or do I try and make it 
better? I don't really know. I'm, I don't really know what this, the best course of action because um, it's been well played with before. I mean, you couldn't see any of this um, because it was all covered in tar and everything. So, you know, none of these worlds are complete. They're all porous. Everywhere you go, there's all holes in them. So, you know, I'm, at, I'm actually having one of those weird moments where I'm not sure what the correct course of action would be because this car is absolutely full of repairs like that because I can tell just by looking at that's over the top of something else it's just and like this brackets cut in half why wouldn't you just drill out the spot welds and remove it as a single piece you know why did you cut it in half that doesn't make any sense to me I mean we all know that I did this repair here and the lead and stuff and that all looks good you can't see through my welds but you look here and this is most definitely a gasless MIG it's really really porous so stuff like that I'd I'd probably have to to fix that I'd have to run a blade through it and then re-weld it but then of course all of this was bogged clean over all this pitting so I don't know what should I you know hack it out and put a piece in because it's all all a mess I mean that's where blasting is good it really shows you all the sins so you know you get those moments like oh what do I do and it does it does get people from time to time I mean look at that wheel arch I'm gonna have to do something about that whether I get a new wheel arch and cut it bigger and weld it in properly I mean this coupe is no no better this one's just as messed up but at least it hasn't had anybody try and fix it so at least all the rust is exposed for the first time this too is going off to be blasted once it's stripped to a bare shell and it'll look just as clean and just as lovely as that when we start um, yeah but at least the roof's good and the gutters are good this one's fantastic so there is some good bits on it this is where your uh, big vacuum tank lives on the Landau's and the P5's for operating your headlights like, I mean, this XC Coupe, a lot of it's really, really good. Plenum chamber's perfect. Pretty much for the windscreen forward, it's good. But, you know, the gutters are chewed out. Twink. Yeah, so it's a bit of a mess in there. And, of course, what we did discover on this car is actually the floor pan's totally stuffed in it. It's also been beaten up quite heavily. But it does give you a nice, clean slate. I mean, look at that. What is that? I don't even know what that is but I don't know and the gutter's not actually the gutter's good on this side too look at that two good bits oh, except for right there that's good but you know I fixed worse than this my brother's land out that had holes that you could put several fingers in all down the roof because his vinyl roof was real bad and once again cut in half and I it's been cut in half twice actually so I don't probably the best course of action would there be to buy that new bracket cut that garbage off and put a fresh one on and uh, it's gonna it's gonna have me racking my brain for a while um, but we did we have made good progress on this coupe if you were watching yesterday you would have seen where we got up to I mean this thing's rusty as well but not too bad um, We'll have this done shortly. I had a, I had a few uh, visitors today and the coupe came back from the blasters and you know so I didn't actually get anything done today which is a bit of a bummer but such is life. So this one's pretty straightforward. I've just got to cut that out, put a new piece in, make a new bracket there, trim off all this yuck in there, take that out, drop in the new seal panel. The new seal panel is ready to go. That's had that bracket put in, hole cut, all good. And if you look at it over here, it's like guards, pair of guards, pair of guards, pair of doors, pair of bonnets, pair of guards, pair of guards. There's, yeah, plenty of work. This is one of the guards off the land. All of this was just bogged up. Like, look at that join. And I don't understand. This is another fine example. Like, that door was covered in bog from one side to the other. Um, but it didn't need to. The door is pretty straight. And this guard is a fine example. Look at that. 
why is there bog there you put a patch in you shouldn't need to put any bog below that so that's and what makes that bad is that's really far up so the other option is that that's not a patch panel that's somebody else has cut two yards and welded them together um, which also makes it another problem but like it was bogged over this paint like what's the story why would you do that uh, I don't know but Peter's guards here I'm gonna get cracking on those on the weekend I reckon and we'll get them happening that's the guard I fixed for him looking lovely the other guard doesn't need any welding just need to strip off that lovely cream straighten up the dents and very minor filler and then prime and paint so they're not actually miles off being done I've just got actually I'm like mm, he's getting a wriggle on better get it done um, land our bonnets actually very very good pass the shelf for that coop over there the rotisserie that's actually out of a sedan so you can cut them down so the coop ones are cut short through here so straight across you just do a straight line cut them off that goes straight into a coop so yeah so that's where we're at um, might not be the longest video might not be the best video uh, but I'm hoping that the owner of the car will see this and actually get a, a good idea of um, where it's at and oh this is a long way down some of the things that we're gonna have to address because I don't know what's oh look there's rust behind there so we'll probably be taking this off and exposing that and seeing what it's like in there but you know the blasting has done some good like that B pill is good all the surface rust that was all on it is gone all up in here everything the whole car had surface rust everywhere and now it doesn't have any of it so we're looking at a clean slate although a slightly rusty clean slate but it's all forward from here <sighs> so look at that um, also as a passing comment people keep asking me if I'd sell this um, I'm the kind of person that anything's for sale for the right amount of money <laughs> but realistically you'd need a fair bit of coin to get that off my hands or you'd need a Falcon Coop project that I would swap for it um, that's about the only thing like I'd probably have to have 30 grand on a pile of cash sitting on the bonnet before I'd start thinking so if that's for anybody who keeps asking me if I'd sell it, that's you'd need at least that before I even start umming and ahhing about parting with it because XBs, are, I've seen heaps of these for sale lately and they're all going for stupid money so um, I'd be stupid to sell this for not much. Plus I've got quite a few fond memories of this car with my daughter and everything so I'd need a fair incentive to part with it if that makes sense but also I'd love to own another Falcon Coupe so I always thought a running and driving and registered sedan with a V8 would have to be the same value as a Falcon Coupe project now um, yeah so that's where we're at so um, yeah hope you enjoy thanks for watching